Hello, and welcome to The Answered Patient. I'm Jane Hansen. You've probably heard of cholesterol before. Chances are it's something your doctor monitors every time you go in for a checkup. But what exactly is cholesterol, and why do we need to watch it so closely? In this episode, we'll tell you about cholesterol, where it comes from, and what it means to have high levels of cholesterol in your blood. We'll also discuss the risks associated with this common condition and what you can do to manage your cholesterol levels. High cholesterol, sometimes called high blood cholesterol, is a major cause of heart disease and stroke. It's also a widespread health problem. The American Heart Association estimates that almost 40 million Americans have total cholesterol levels that put them at high risk of major health problems. And have you been doing your walking? How far are you up to now? Cholesterol is a lipid, a soft, waxy fat produced by the liver. While too much of it is bad for your health, cholesterol is actually an important building block of the human body. We have to have cholesterol. You know, it's, 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 it's part of our, the cell membrane or the cell wall of all of our cells. You know, we have millions, millions, probably billions of cells within our body, and it makes up the membrane or the, the wall of those cells. The body also uses cholesterol to protect nerve fibers, to produce the hormones testosterone and estrogen, and to make the chemicals our bodies need to digest food. Cholesterol is distributed throughout the body via the bloodstream. If you have high cholesterol, it means you have excessive amounts of cholesterol in your blood. When this occurs, the circulatory system stores that extra cholesterol in your arteries, eventually damaging them. An excess amount of cholesterol circulating in the blood is going to deposit somewhere. When it begins to deposit initially, it, and it can happen as early as the age of 18, uh, it just begins to lie down in the um, wall of the artery, in between the layers of the wall of the artery that make up the lining. Over time, cholesterol deposited in the arteries can grow into formations of what is called plaque. If left unchecked, Plaque can cause arteries to narrow and harden, a condition known as atherosclerosis. Health problems related to atherosclerosis, such as heart disease, are the leading cause of death in the United States. Doctors have identified many factors that can contribute to high cholesterol. Some of them, like diet, weight, and exercise, are controllable. If you eat foods heavy in saturated fats and trans fats, if you are overweight or obese, or if you don't exercise regularly, you are more likely to develop high cholesterol. There are also some causes of high cholesterol that are beyond our control, like age, gender, and heredity. Most people naturally develop higher cholesterol as they age. Women tend to have an increase in cholesterol after menopause. And for reasons not totally understood, the liver in some people is genetically predisposed to produce unhealthy amounts of cholesterol. The best way to monitor your cholesterol is with a simple test called a lipid panel. High cholesterol is a fairly easy thing to pick up with a blood test and we screen for cholesterol routinely now because it affects so many arteries in so many places. A lipid panel measures your LDL, known as bad cholesterol, your HDL, known as good cholesterol, your total cholesterol, and your triglycerides. You may be familiar with the terms good and bad cholesterol. LDL, or bad cholesterol, stands for low-density lipoprotein. LDL is what leads to excess cholesterol in your arteries, which can cause atherosclerosis. Let me give you one piece of literature about low cholesterol foods. HDL, which is the so-called good cholesterol, stands for high-density lipoprotein. HDL contributes to reduced amounts of cholesterol buildup in the arteries. Higher levels of HDL cholesterol often mean a lower risk of atherosclerosis. Sorry, the HDL yeah. is 41. Okay, that's good. And the LDL was 106. Right. The National Institutes of Health have issued targets for healthy levels of cholesterol. LDL should be below 100 milligrams per deciliter of blood. 
HDL should be above 40 milligrams, and total cholesterol should be less than 200 milligrams. Triglycerides are the final measurement taken in a lipid panel. Triglycerides are not cholesterol, but another type of fat found in the blood. High levels of triglycerides can contribute to atherosclerosis and are closely associated with heart attacks. Your triglyceride level should be less than 150 milligrams per deciliter of blood. While it can be difficult to fully appreciate the significance of these numbers, here's one statistic to keep in mind. Elevated levels of bad cholesterol can double your risk of heart disease. It can be considered the silent killer. We have very strong data to show that higher cholesterol values means higher coronary heart disease rates and higher deaths from coronary heart disease. But if you have elevated cholesterol levels, remember, many treatment options are available. There's been studies to show that if we drive that LDL even lower, I can actually help you to live longer and healthier. The first line of treatment is often a change in lifestyle. Eating a heart-healthy diet and getting the proper amount of exercise can go a long way toward reducing cholesterol. There is also a wide variety of drugs available to help manage and control the condition. The most effective cholesterol-lowering medicine that we have right now are the, the statins, but uh, doctors also have a number of other uh, cholesterol-lowering medications available. Despite its common rate of occurrence and serious potential consequences, studies show that high cholesterol is a relatively undertreated condition. That's why it's important to find out your cholesterol levels, what they mean, and to take whatever steps necessary to manage them. In the other chapters of this episode, you can learn more about diagnosing high cholesterol, get some science on how cholesterol works in your body, and discover the various treatment options currently being practiced. And in our personal story chapter, you'll meet a real patient and his doctor who are successfully managing this condition. Finally, if you would like to be kept up to date on high cholesterol, you can subscribe to this series on our health channel at AnswersTV.com.